Hi guys, Kevin here. So this is the Invasion case. It's a Malaysian brand case and under the H series by Invasion, there's actually two versions. Right in front of us is the H2. This is the compact ATX form factor case where you can mount the radiator on the front. There's some benefit to this approach, which I'll talk in a little bit of video. Whereas the bigger brother is called the H1, which is slightly of a bigger profile and taller profile where you can mount the radiator on top. It depends on your setup again. Now, when you buy either of this case, it comes with three fixed RGB fans. But for the purpose of this review, I want to emphasize the exterior design. I went out with full blackout build, minimal RGB in this approach. The case is built with high airflow movement in mind, thanks to its large mesh front panel that allows either for large volume of air intake or large volume of air exhaust out of the case. It is magnetically attached for easy maintenance and cleaning. It can support either three 120mm fans or 240 or 280 radiator but with tight clearance or a two 140 fan setup right here. The swing door can open more than 180 degrees angle. It can be detached, it's lightly tinted and it's 3mm thick. Now I prefer this design over the conventional four thumb screws to hold down the temper glass because a lot of people where they remove the temper glass, when they remove the thumb screw, they forgot to hold the bottom of the temper glass and the temper glass just automatically drop into the ground and shatter into a billion pieces. So you won't face that scenario because it's hold down my two strong magnets and it's not like the conventional design. Plus this design right here is very kit friendly. And what I mean by that is once you put this ribbon inwards of the case right here, there is no way to open the temper glass. So Butterfingers and kids with itchy hands will not open the temper glass easily or get access into your hardware. And the only way to remove the temper glass round is actually to use a plastic cut or plastic ruler and pry open from the front. So it's very kid friendly. Looking on top of the case right now, it has the power and restart button, the LED switch button, one USB 3.0, two USB 2.0, a headphone and microphone jack. The top can support either two 120 or 140mm fan with fine mesh filter that is magnetically attached. Looking at the back of the case, the panel can be removed by pulling it towards you. Below the CPU cutout, there's room for one SSD bay. The cable management is good because the gap between the main plate and the back panel is 1.8cm. So thick cables would be fine right here. Plus there's plenty of room on the bottom left for cable management. There's also a removable hard drive cage where you can hold up to two mechanical hard drive or one mechanical hard drive and one SSD. Looking at the bottom, the four plastic feeds with foam bottom increase the height of the case by 2.1 cm. And the dust filter is actually hold on by latch. I wish it has a trace type system that will be nicer so the dust will not fly around. Now looking at the insides of the case right here, it fits a full-size ATX board neatly and beautifully. When it comes to cable management cutout, there's a total of two on the top, two on the bottom and three in the middle. Now I wish the top and bottom cutout was a little bit more wider so the cable can turn around or flex around quite easily. Now aside from that, this one can support GPU lengths up to 305mm in length. This GPU right here is the Inno 3D iQ RTX 2070 Super which is 300mm in length. There's still even room clearance for a radiator right here. Now aside from that, there's a total of 7 PCI slots on the back and it can support one 120mm rear fan right here. Back to the topic of airflow, this case again is built with high airflow movement in mind. It can fit up of a total of 6 fans. 3 on the front, 2 on the top and 1 on the rear right here. So I'm going to share with you 3 fan configuration setup right here. And often time with this kind of budget range for cases like this, you are only limited to positive or negative airflow. The third option right here is special because of the front mesh filter right here that allows the air movement to be fully unrestricted. So there's a lot of possibility for playing around with airflow movement depending on your application once more. So the first fan configuration setup is actually positive airflow. It's quite simple to do. All you have to do is have three fans on the front and one fan on the rear as intake into the case and the two fans on top right here as exhaust of the heat out of the case. For that, you need to remove the mesh filter right here so it does not restrict the air movement. It allows the large volume of air to be pushed out top of the case. So that's one. The second configuration is negative airflow setup which is on the opposite where you want the two fans to draw fresh air into the case. Don't worry about the dust. Remember the magnetic dust filter? Just put it on. No need to worry about that. Then you have the three fans on the front and one fan on the rear as purely exhaust the air out of the case. So that's the majority of the case can do it. But again, 
The reason why we can do such high volume of air, positive airflow or negative airflow because of this unrestricted mesh front panel right here. So the third fan configuration setup is actually benefiting push and pull configuration for radiator support. Now before I proceed further, let me explain the other case in the market how they generally work so you understand the benefit of this front mesh panel design. Now when it comes to compact ATX form factor or similar price case of this category right here, you usually cannot mount the radiator on top because the clearance is just not there. So you no choice to mount the radiator on the front. Now, when you want mount the radiator on the front, you want to exhaust the air as fast and quickly out of the case. The problem with most cases is they are fully covered on the front and few ventilation ports on the side or the bottom of the case. So it's not possible to exhaust a large volume of hot air out of the case to the front. So you no choice to invert the case fan opposite and bring the hot air back into the case hopefully the other fans if you have them but most cases don't support i mean don't give you all six fans one shot they only give you either one or two stock fans hopefully you can exhaust the air quickly out of the case but oftentimes a lot of people don't invest with additional fans they face hot air circulation back into the system and actually thermal throttle or you know increase the temperature here and there not in the case of the invasion case right here well nice pun right there because this case the front panel is fully meshed unrestricted airflow meaning i can set up both the top and rear as intake pushing high volumes of air into the radiator where the two fronts right here exhaust the air out of the case so this is a push and the front of the fence right here is pull configuration setup this is the first case that i know of this price point is capable to do so. And I like this kind of setup because it can actually cool down. And I just need to check my nose because I'm a bit of a forget a full person. Now using my previous setup right here, I'm actually using an ASUS Turf X570 board overclock at 3800X processor up to 4.3 gigahertz. With IDA test give us 67 degrees Celsius on the CPU. This is with the ambient temperature of 25 degrees. So you can tell that AIO, in this case right here, is AIO friendly when it comes to push-pull configuration, exhausting the hot air directly out of the case with, without circling back into the case. I'm assuming in the comments, people will say, oh, you should go fractal design, it has front mesh panel. Or people will say, oh, you should go Fantex P400A, it has fine mesh filter, it can do the same thing, I know good. All those Chinamen, all those, those Americans, calm down. Let me ask you two main questions. How many cases in the market in a compact ATX form factor like this has front mesh panel like this? Not many. Now my second question to you is, you cannot invalid me because I'm going to ask you one question. How many cases in the market has the same cost like this case right here? If you're talking brands like famous brands like Fractal Design, Fantex or other cases in the market, they are usually two to four times more expensive than this case right here. And this case right here can produce the same overclocking results, especially when you use the same AIO, you use the same board and also the 3800X overclock to 4.3 gigahertz with 67 degrees Celsius on the CPU temps itself. Same result at a very much more effective cost price right here. So would I recommend this case? Yes. And it's so friendly, it's so good for airflow movement. Basically, you're not going to spend so much on cooling. You can actually go with six fans and a typical CPU tower and you have great thermal results. So thank you for watching this video. If you're interested where to purchase this case, links in the video description including the updated price. I actually, a lot of Malaysian resellers would sell this case so you can just say, hey, do you sell Invasion case? They are most likely to carry them because it's worldwide, nationwide right now. Not worldwide, nationwide. So thank you for watching this video. Comment below what other case we should review next. Remember to like and subscribe. Help share this video in social media, especially if you're Malaysian. You know, support Malaysian brand. Till then, I'll see you guys in the next case review. And I, hopefully, I'm going to review another Invasion case review. There's another one called the M3, which has amazing airflow as well. I hope Invasion sends me that case. <laughs> Bye.